second video showing how we're going to underpin and dig a basement under that house in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Almost all material from this project is going to go up the little plywood path you see on your left. There's a, a bad ravine and a wooden retaining wall that's failing behind that fairy tale house. So it's going to take about 25 or 30 dump truck loads of material to get that straightened out. This is the retirement project in a one-man job. So I dug a mine shaft in the back garage stall and then uh, put some conveyors and dumped some equipment down the wall. I'm not shoveling anything. It shows the conveyor that's taking material out. And the other conveyor that loads that. Stairs going down. That's a power cart that was built. So uh, you'll see an electric mini excavator later. I built that power cart so we can run that mini off of household current. Bottom view of the mine shaft. Conveyor to your left. The power cart, like everything else, it was scrounged out of parts from all over the place. That stairs behind there came from Rockford. Conveyor, one came from Minneapolis, one from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Bottom of that cart came from uh, Detroit. The top came from Dodgeville and the motor. A double wine motor came from Chicago. There's a long narrow path to get in back to an area that's wide enough where I could finally use a Georgia buggy and then swing that excavator before that or just loading a wheelbarrow and just uh, swinging the journal on the mini excavator. Now it's out in the open. I'm loading material in this Georgia buggy. It uh, holds like a uh, little over wheel, one and a half wheelbarrow loads and what's nice about these you don't have to lift them. It revolves around the center of that axle and then when you dump it dumps on those forward uh, rocker beams. It'll stop any place you leave it so you can actually tip it with one hand. It's quite a bit easier. It's an electric mini excavator that's doing all the shoveling. I changed one valve around on there. Cut the ears off one bucket, turned it around so it would work like a shovel instead of a backhoe. This came from Chicago. It runs on electricity so there's no fumes and no shoveling down here. Like I said, it's a one-man job. So I'm automating whatever I can. This is a view of our crawl space. I hung some construction lights in there so it didn't look so spooky. It's only about 40 inches deep. It's a good time to explain the underpinning process. See a concrete wall around the perimeter. The house weighs roughly 300,000 pounds. Two thirds of that is on the outside walls. So that means the weight of the house is about a thousand pounds per foot. The trick is not to cut out the virgin soil underneath it. So you see that weight from that wall is going straight down on original soil. So I take out the whole inside except for a six foot perimeter. And when then that's out, go for the center of a wall, shore up the joist, and then take out a six foot wide cut underneath the wall. At that point the wall will work like a beam. I'll dig it out, put five feet of uh, concrete wall, tar, tile, and stone and everything underneath it. Two weeks later do the same thing in the other side of the basement, then two weeks later come back and put the next one here. I said earlier about the original soil staying underneath the wall and that's not true in two areas. In order to get the uh, pathway through here, the hollow wood, you can see that it's just too narrow to leave the original soil there, like a vertical wall in the cut. Almost the same thing on the other side. So they're shore up here holding those two walls apart. So they can't go down and into the wall. That's also the case where we cut the foundation wall. That's a non-load bearing wall. And there's not enough for a return to hold that in place. There's also a shore there. Good example of scope creep here. I'm taking out the original or the uh, concrete floor and the gravel below it. Had about two and a half feet of clay under that. Below that, the glaciers had put a seam of uh, 
mason sand in there is just a pure sugar. And that makes it, uh, it's like hauling sugar, it makes it a little bit more difficult to handle. Another good example of how scope creep can get you. I cribbed up to take out the first basement post. You see the two short shores there. And the original post is laying down. The idiots who put the plumbing in ran the waistline right down the center of the columns just to save themselves a little digging. So, uh, no big deal, shore it up. And when a new post get here, then I'll just dig underneath it and put the new pad and post in. And then here is Grandpa Jensen's barn jack, 120 years old and still working. 